Embrace for Hilarity. Today on Things I Found Online, our studio is graced by the presence of stand-up comedy legend Jimmy Brogan. According to the Los Angeles Times, Jimmy has elevated stand-up comedy interaction to a high art. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it was I, a good I really should have pre-read that. Can we do an edit? Oh, we're live. <laughs> But uh, seriously, Jimmy has elevated stand-up comedy crowd interaction to a high art. Ah, yes. Why is the, the font so small? He will now attempt to help us elevate podcasting to any level of art. Jimmy joins us with Jack Daniel, who's dressed quite snappily. And Matt, Matt Champagne. Champagne. Well, it yeah. says it right here. Oh, it does? Okay. Me, I'm Joe Cipriano, and the very next person to speak will be Louise Palenker. Louise? Thank you, Joe. That was triumphant. No, it wasn't. It really wasn't. <laughs> Welcome, that Jimmy was Brogan. Yeah. Yay. Thank you. Oh. We will now uh, nice. ceremoniously Google Jim. Oh. Yeah. And see what the Google... Oh, the pressure. ...Mahim <laughs> has to say. Oh. Have you ever Googled yourself? Uh, I have. privacy of your own home? Okay. There you oh, are, look. Jimmy. Yes, I have. There you are. Look, look. up there. So oh, according yeah. to Google, oh. yeah. Jimmy Rogan, sometimes credited as Jim Brogan, is an American stand-up comedian, writer, and actor. He has made numerous stand-up appearances on the talk show circuit, including The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson, Late Night with David Letterman. He was a writer on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno for nine years. Wow, wow. And here is Jimmy's <laughs> website. Oh, we he's go. learning how to be funny oh, from Steve hey, Allen. Look at that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bring up a little more. That's it. Yeah, there yeah. we go. How to be funny. <laughs> did, did Steve Allen teach you how to be funny? You know, I read his books when I first started out, and uh, I did a couple of shows with him, and uh -huh. he was uh, he was very gracious and mentioned me in that book actually. Wow! About how to ad lib, which was that's just, cool. You know what an honor. Well, one time I was tasked with uh, picking up a bust of Steve Allen after his passing, and uh, it was a very big bust. And I had it. And what was for what purpose? I don't remember. I worked <laughs> on the John Davidson talk show, oh, and they needed uh, it. Ah, yes. Okay. But I, I put the seatbelt around <laughs> because I just felt like you know safe, you gotta protect. Safe, yeah. safety sure. first. Yes. When I go yeah. shopping, I put my groceries in the passenger seat, and <laughs> oh, the uh, seat the seatbelt seat alarm will go off because it thinks my groceries are a person, which well, I already thought of as my groceries as being a person. <laughs> of anyway. course you did, yes. and but I would yes. strap those in. Yeah, I think I know where that bust ended up though. Where? At the at the center for inquiry. Okay. That that we're. Uh, well, you're welcome. Yeah, uh -huh. I, I mean, if it's the same bust, I, I don't mean to su suggest there's only one bust of Steve Allen. No, True, there, why there could be multiple, there? multiple busts. Yeah. All right, so but here, here's my question yes? about the Steve Allen. Did you use the carpool lane? I was. <laughs> it crossed my mind that okay. I could be so bold. Yeah, okay. but I did talk to him. Wow. Yeah. Wow. The bust or the, thought, the actual I, I, I Steve? Said, so Steve. Yeah. Where are we going today? I can't remember. I think that I think they were doing a tribute to him on on the John Davidson show, uh -huh. and I was sent to uh, Jane's uh, house okay. and, and given the bus. Was this okay. in the the center of Hollywood? You were, was that TAV back then? You know, I've done so many wacky things yeah. in my showbiz. You don't even remember. I don't know. Yeah, okay. It could have been. It could have been. Yeah. But we're going to jump ahead in our rundown, and it's because of our sensitivity to our guest, <laughs> Jimmy Brogan. There, there is a controversial portion <laughs> yes. of, of the show, so buckle in. All right, um, all right. Buckle in your Steve Allen bust. Well, at least be before you even get to the first thing. Okay. Can I, can I say something? Uh, Louise and I yeah. uh, dated for two years. Wait what? a so, second. Wow. So Wait. I just want to get that out of you. Oh, you didn't remember that? Wait a minute. Louise didn't realize <laughs> that. I that was you. I didn't know it would be that this was, shocking. Was, I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> yeah, people are I don't know yeah. that I would have agreed to sit down <laughs> if I had known that. I would have. Uh, wow. So I want to get that, that out of the way yeah. in, in case yeah. that comes I up. I love that Louise Google. didn't realize like, no. that, that you dated for two years. <laughs> no, we even, did we have a couple name? Were we Jewezy or? <laughs> oh, it was before a couple names. Two. Yes, it was. But I'll tell you how long ago it was actually. Louise, okay. Is uh, in, in this in your house here? This is the first place I ever saw the internet. Wow! Wow! This was wow. like ninety, wow. maybe five or six. I maybe? was newfangled. Yes, yes you were. It, it was AOL. Okay. It was in your office. You said you've got to see the internet. Wow! I'm trying to convince my company to. Uh, that's a, have a website. Oh, I was very that's that's groundbreaking. A, you were so for, yeah. That's yeah. an internet that sounds like a sheet, by the way. Whatever that sound <laughs> like. <laughs> so, yeah. so we went we yeah. went into your yeah. office and you did the the internet, you know, it was dial up, it yeah. was AOL. Yeah. And you're all right, whatever that noise was, which is delightful. <laughs> and when I oh you gotta see this and it didn't connect. It didn't work. And I thought, <laughs> oh. It didn't connect. Yeah. Kind of like this show is. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. I, I thought, this internet is going nowhere. <laughs> this, this, 
this is nothing. This is wasting your time on the internet. Uh, <laughs> Fetch me my boogie whip. I am yeah, out of here. That's right. So that's right. Excuse well, me. we're gonna go back to a time. Was that yes. your first date? Was that that your first date? Like, oh, get no. a load of this internet, yeah. and then uh, <laughs> you set it up, and it doesn't work out, and it ends up being symbolic for your relationship. Mm. Ooh, yes, wow. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Let's see if we can find that, that, that was a question, by the way. That was okay. a question. It was that not was our first date. Oh, we okay. had both like we. The way that I remembered it, we were both kind of living like in the flatlands, and then we yeah. both kind of like moved into homes in the hills. That's I right. see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well that on up to the east side. I, I just don't know what to say. Yeah, I, <laughs> you are blushing. I, I just want to point that what you, out. We're talking about Flatlands. Flatlands. Yeah. What, what were the well, Flatlands he lived in West Hollywood with Jerry Seinfeld, and I lived <laughs> in the same building. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I lived in Marina Del Rey at that time. That's right. right? And then oh, I moved out of Marina Del Rey. Del Rey. Yeah. Trish moved in. Yeah. Oh yeah, we have showbiz stories. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yes. So, but before Jimmy was a show business legend, he was a college student at Notre Dame. Yes. And Notre Dame is a, is a very fierce school oh boy. with a lot of like ardent alumni mm-hmm. who it seems have spent a lot of time scanning uh, <laughs> the Notre Dame newspaper, The Observer, so that it now exists online. And That's when right. Jimmy and I were dating, he used to tell me these fabled legends of how he <laughs> used to review concerts for the Notre Dame newspaper. Yeah. And I used to say, but Jimmy, you can't carry a tune. How were you able to recognize a good concert discernible from a, a not so good concert? And he just delighted in that he didn't care. He just liked really kind of going after like symphonies? Petula Clark or no, who, this was, uh, who they'd bring to campus after a football game. They have a big concert like the Temptations or oh. the Supremes or, yeah. or yeah. somebody like that. Okay. The Association maybe later on. And, the Association. Yeah. And so, so tell me your version of it. like Because you're such a, a sweetheart of a guy. <laughs> what was this personality that kind of emerged as you were typing? Oh, uh, well, there were some good reviews and some negative reviews, depending on whatever act there was. Mm-hmm. But uh, I thought I was uniquely qualified because uh, I had a radio. <laughs> oh, <are> they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and I listened to the radio, and I thought this qualified me. That was so. That was my first qualification. And this this you have to remember. This was uh, mid '60s. Yeah. And uh, there wasn't. You couldn't just look something up. No. I mean, there was no, no way to find you would it. Have it, to go to the library like to the do such day, things. Yeah. I, I was listening uh, to a TV commercial, and they. Played uh, I Like Bread and Butter by the New Beats. Oh, yeah. And uh, I Like Bread and Butter. Exactly. Mm. And I thought, oh, let me look that up in a second. Was, Boom. You know, yeah, and you can YouTube, have lyrics yeah. and everything. On Dick Clark. Is, you know, is I Like, like Bread and Butter the beginning of the song? Because I'm I dying like to know where that song goes. It's the hook. Oh, that's the hook. I like oh, okay. yeah. 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 Tell me that you and like bread and butter. I'm like, me. I'm listening. It's how big it was. I'm her <laughs> what else? Man. Oh, oh, oh. There you see there. Can I, could someone please call up Can the I just tell I like bread and butter. First of all, I want to know. Bread and butter was nothing until this song came out. This song made oh, bread and butter. butter. Yes. Yeah. But he also yeah. liked toast and jam. He okay. did like I want to point out. So, yes. just so the yeah. fact that I liked bread and butter as a kid is it's just coincidental this, to the No, it's because that, of this song. Oh, okay. yeah. Was this metaphorical so. bread and butter? Or <laughs> I don't know. Bread and butter I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, was was it? that a yeah. euphemism yeah, for something There's a lot of those untold. songs. Well, right. but, but at the end of the song, uh, he comes home and finds her uh, eating chicken, chicken and dumplings with another man. Yeah. Oh. See, so there's a story. It's really Twist. an arc. I think I know what that means. <laughs> I think I know turn. what that means. Uh, yeah. So, but but the wow. point the point is uh, now you can do that. Yeah. Back back in 1966 when I went to college, there was one TV in the dorm, and it was down in the basement. It was a tube TV that was you know giant, except the screen was probably 19 inches. <laughs> right. Wow. And uh, by October of that year, one of the tubes had gone out, and it never worked the rest of the year. So uh, it, it, there was no TV. So radio was our only lifeline out of there. And in my six years at Notre Dame, uh, I had six roommates and no one else had a radio. So you were the, you were I, the, I only had you were a that guy. Yes, yes. Okay. So were so, you six years at Notre Dame because you had grades like I had? You had a very important column <laughs> I, to write. I did. A, I did a four-year <laughs> if, course in six years. If I may, I would like to do a dramatic reading. All right. Here All right. Go. <laughs> and butter. Oh, oh, we're going back. Okay. Uh, okay. Sure. Please, okay. Here we go. Yes. I like bread and butter. Yeah. I like toast and jam. That's yeah. what my baby feeds me. I'm 
proper loving man. Yes. He likes bread and butter. He likes toast. I see where this is. Yes. <laughs> That's what his baby feeds him. He's loving. She don't Those cook mashed singers. potatoes. Ah. No, no. She don't cook T-bone steaks. Uh -uh. Don't feed me peanut butter. She knows that I can't take. Well, I wouldn't want peanut butter with my T-bone steaks. No. Either. And then it just sort of repeats. But from get there. to the surprise and ending. It, oh, yeah, let's wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. No more bread and butter. Yeah. No more toast and jam. I found my baby eating with some other man. Ah, wow. There it is. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know that was. Oh, I did know that was coming because you mentioned it. What year was that? Does it say uh, sixty? Be, uh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, it's probably mid 60, 65 maybe. Overview. 64? Will it be an overview? All right, let's go but, to the yeah. archives. <laughs> Louise has lost oh. control of the show. <laughs> no, okay, Brendan, I... there's a 1964 song. Oh, okay. By the okay. New Beats, written by Larry Parks and Jay Turnbow. Okay. Uh, so, so, Louise, my anyway. other qualification for okay. writing, writing these uh, reviews was my roommate was the editor of the feature page of the campus paper. Okay. So, And he had to fill the page every day. <laughs> you know, it's a weekly, it was a daily paper. And what, so, what, what was his name? Uh, Tom Airbar. So he's not the guy that you did the panty raid article with. There was a co-writer there. Uh, possibly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, most likely, actually. Most likely, yeah. Okay. Because he, he was the feature. You have uh, to editor. change the rating okay. at this point. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> so uh, yes. So I was the music editor, uh, music uh, critic, and other roommate, uh, Dave Edmonds, was a theater critic. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, okay. So you were covering just, the waterfront. Why aren't we talking about the panty raid article? Why, why, <laughs> why are we talking about anything other oh, than we'll the get panty to that. raid article? We'll get to that next week. So let's click on the uh, review that... Uh, that Jimmy did of the association. Oh, there we go. Okay. And the poor association, they came into town and they poured their love, their heart, their oh, harmonies but, into this but look at event. That. And then, and look then at that one, lead. One Cherish upstart, the association. Jim E. Brogan, Cherish, the association, writes, it was a lack of the theatrical which put a damper on the Blood, Sweat, and Tears concert and came close to making last Friday's the association concert a disaster. Wow. The concert no started here. slowly and dragged through the first half. It was not until the last song of the first set, Goodbye Forever, that the association finally came alive. Wow. Finally. Yeah. You and wrote this? You were rough in on the, on the yes. association. But then, then, but it's balanced. It, it, is, it was balanced. <laughs> it was balanced. It was balanced. <laughs> don't, I, don't, I, don't I say they came around in the you second did. half? You did. You did. You, you did. did say they, that. They came around and oh. then... But you know his his love. reviews sometimes yeah. would incite the ire of uh, at that time readers. the association were just ten year old kids and I I think it was Jimmy was one of the first trolls <laughs> yes yeah, exactly. before it was a pre internet troll <laughs> well there so, was no, so no one else reviewed the, the concert internet. before yeah. I did <laughs> and this was I was this was groundbreaking at the time yes absolutely yeah. so uh, the a letter to the editor that was published <laughs> it came in from Ed Salego do, do you know Ed. I don't remember him exactly. All right, yes. so Ed wrote, uh -oh. who is Brogan anyway? Who is he? I would like to know who the hell Jim Brogan thinks he is. <laughs> I would like to know what he thinks it is that gives him the right to degrade comedians and singing groups. <laughs> wow. Well, so, I told you what, what yeah, my qualifications. Yeah. He had a radio, Ed. <laughs> I had a radio, right. yes. yes. Yeah. All right. So what was uh, his name, the uh, the guy who wrote in? Oh, that was Ed Salego. Oh, Ed? Ed Salego. Yeah. I think he's a member of the association, <laughs> as I recall. <laughs> I think he's lead, uh, lead there singer. There were like 10 yeah. of them. So. Well, yeah. I want to point out that this was the 60s, and there was nothing else to protest about at that point. <laughs> 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 so... Yeah, so the vitriol true. was really pointed. You were just that getting everybody true. warmed Jason up. Your crosshairs. <laughs> it was all over. So, uh, oh, gosh. All That's right, so stuff. we're going to go back to, do you have video uh, from Jimmy's website so we can see a little of what he does on stage? Oh. Oh, I know it well. Yeah. Let's see it. So you're live, and, and you get heckled. Yes. Well, good evening. How are you? Oh, two people. Good. You sound good. good. Well, I'm feeling good. Just tell you a little bit about myself. I tell you, first of all, I'm not as hip as I look. <laughs> Don't be fooled. I am not hip boy. I party like it's 1899. Reference hip, huh? Now I didn't start out originally from Cleveland, Ohio. It's my hometown. <laughs> Yes, I hated it too, and uh, yes. Because I know Cleveland and Jeanette are two rival cities. <laughs> oh, the big rivalry there. Thank you. 
That's all we talk about in Cleveland. Those people in Jeanette's. We're going to go down there and tip over their cows. <laughs> no, you don't. I mean, you moved back there, so you don't like Cleveland. Why did you move there? Oh, Jeanette. Huh? Oh, because of the big rivalry with Jeanette, huh? Yeah. Are you from Jeanette, sir? Do, do, do you live in Jeanette? What? Oh, jeez. I think I have my answer, sir. <laughs> so that's... So Jimmy uh, does Jimmy does that, and uh, this is the mayor he's completely of Jeanette, fearless. Yeah. It is like tight work walking. Yeah, yeah, we're going to get to the crowd work a little bit later, but I want to first address this this group of photos, ah. if you have that, Lane. Okay. And the reason they're booing Cleveland in uh, Jeanette is yeah. it's a suburb of Pittsburgh and the Steelers <laughs> and the Browns. So oh. I was completely caught off guard, actually, Yeah. In, in that, you know, that, uh, you know, once in a while I'll get some, one person in the audience that claps for Cleveland, but to have the entire audience Oh, booed. I see. <laughs> so it was, yeah, it so was, I was really, sworn I was really enemy. lost at that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. What, what, so, so what, so uh, upper left-hand corner, we have Jimmy and, and Jay Leno pointing at each other. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, as if someone just asked who stole the last cookie. <laughs> uh, so explain your friendship with Jay Leno, how far back that goes. Oh, uh, it goes back to uh, when I first moved out here in 1979. I was cast in a TV show called Out of the Blue, and uh, I was coming out of the improv uh, down on Melrose, and Jay was sitting on his motorcycle, <laughs> and he says, uh, hey, you're the kid with the TV show. <laughs> <laughs> I go, wow. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he started talking to me, and we became friends, and... Uh, uh, started hanging out at his house with uh, uh, other comic friends, uh, Seinfeld and Larry Miller and Carol Leaf. We'd go up to Jay's house every night when he was in town and just hang out. Uh, and so that's how our friendship began. Awesome. All right, let's see the photos again. And then we have you on on uh, The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. And you look very relaxed. Oh. That's not <laughs> how I would be oh, that were uh, happening to me. What was going on king. inside yeah. of you? I was terrified. Yeah. At every moment. That was my sixth appearance. Wow. And uh, Jim McCauley, who was the, uh, the booker on the show, he said, oh, <clears throat> you'll calm down after the first appearance. No, it was absolutely <laughs> frightening every time. And I think right before this appearance, this is my last appearance with Johnny before he retired, uh, he said, uh, Letterman throws up every time wow. he appears in the show. And I thought, well, that didn't calm me down. That was, <laughs> that was the opposite. That was the scariest thing I ever heard. Made it worse, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. horrible. Jimmy, I've uh, seen you on The Tonight Show, and uh, I, I remember you looking like you're in the groove. Like, you're like, wow, this is fun. You look like you're having fun. Well, it's it was... a great <clears throat> illusion then, I guess. It was just that I had prepared so hard mm -hmm. for those appearances. Yeah. I had run, <clears throat> yeah. you know, the, my first time on the show, I had run that sp spot of five minutes, two years, for two years before I did it on the show. Yeah. Every night, every, yeah. every show. And so it came out, even yeah, though I wasn't even there. And by the way, I noticed that it was five minutes. One of the ones that I saw is that, that did they give comics longer periods of time on the Tonight Show than they do now on Late Night? Because I don't think it, does a comic really get five minutes? Well, it was like five, on Fallon. Yeah, not, not anymore. It, yeah, I mean the Tonight Show was down to four and a half by the time I left. I uh huh. Think, and it's, but it was uh, five in the clubs, and Johnny, and it often stretched to six with applause and. Mm -hmm and stuff so it was, wow. it was a little bit longer yeah but, yeah but johnny was unbelievable i'll tell you a story about how great johnny was uh when i'm, I'm sitting there on the panel mm. and uh <clears throat> i have a joke that has a couple of taglines which are additional jokes and uh so i finished my joke i get a laugh and uh, johnny starts to turn to go to commercial and, and my, my arms are on the there's you see the arm on the chair yeah i i just put my finger up this much <laughs> i don't know if you can even see the camera just just in, just an inch and Johnny stops. He, he picked up on it. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And uh, so I do the tag, gets a laugh. He starts to turn again, and I put my finger up once again, <laughs> and he stops a second time, lets me do the tag. Wow. And then that. he goes to commercial. And oh, awesome. that, I mean, that's how in touch Johnny was. Yeah, that's but, amazing. Uh, but yeah. to me, looking back on it, I think, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, they've got to time the show. I think you know. were thinking, you know, I write for the Notre Dame Observer. That's right. And I've got something to you don't add. Want me to cherish on you, man. I'll go all association <laughs> I, on you. I don't have enough people hating me. <laughs> I want Johnny. That's to hate pretty me cool. Wow. But it was. I mean, that's 
you know, you see. Well, he host. knows comedy so well. Just that little gesture, he knew yeah. that. Yeah, he knew, yeah. yeah. Well, he wow. he trusted comics. So if the comic mm-hmm. was saying, "I've got something that would that would benefit your program," yeah, he understood that. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, and Jimmy, that's was, what he was great. At. Was there a question as to whether you'd be invited over to the couch for your first appearance? Uh, no, I was. This was my sixth appearance. Oh, okay. I was finally. Oh, I see. And I, and I was going. So you must have felt something big when that happened. I, it was unbelievable. Uh, yeah, and, and I, it was exciting. And they said, oh, you'll, you'll sit down. I said, oh, that's so exciting. They said, yeah, Johnny's retiring. Everyone's sitting down. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh come on. They, they took it away. <laughs> Man, but damn. still, it was, it was still, you were, absolutely. You were invited, so Real. that's. Yeah. yeah. And then we have you with Dave. Uh, with Letterman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. On the uh, set. Yeah, down there. Yeah. yeah. He yes. looks delighted and, to have you. And you sat down with Dave right, right away. Yeah, that was my right. first time with Dave. And. Uh, and I sat down, and uh, I didn't know you weren't supposed to talk to Dave during the commercials. Oh, you're oh. not? Well, or, I mean, <laughs> it, they, generally the staff comes out and talks to the host and says what's next and what they, how much time they have left, that sort of stuff. So I didn't know. And I had been doing a lot of uh, pilots at that point, <coughs> uh, game shows and stuff. And uh, I always felt bad when the audience just sat there when we took a break, you know. And so I, I leaned over and I said to Dave, uh, do you feel bad uh, not entertaining the audience during the commercials? And he said, uh, no, I don't during the show, so why should I do the commercials? <laughs> <laughs> why it just, start? It just made me laugh. A little moment with Dave. Uh, that's and, great. You know, and that's we, how funny and, oh, yeah. and great he just was. Just Did you have that sort of uh, sympathy with him, too? I mean, could you, would he sense it when you were going to do something or go for something? You know, I just did the show once, that one time, actually. And uh, my managers never saw it, so they never called back. Oh, man. <laughs> Which was silly that I didn't mention to them. Oh, yeah. I, I oh, by the way, I did I, Letterman. I did, yeah, I did well on <laughs> yeah. the show. Yeah. By the way, yeah. So oh, it's just uh, sure. Yes, but uh, I, I did the warm up one time for a Letterman show in Vegas. This was before that appearance, and uh, and this is my manager. And I was worried because it was in a big showroom, and I never played a bigger room than the Comedy Store, which was in the main room was maybe four hundred seats. And so I was worried if it were three thousand seats, I okay. couldn't do my talking to the audience. Yeah. So I was worried. So I'd ask uh, the assistant in my manager's office. I said, could you find out how big the room is? I, I'm a little nervous about it. And she'd just go, <sighs> and i just hear that every day. And so this went on for like a month, you know, and I was getting more and more worried as I got closer and closer. And so finally, you know, like the day before I'm supposed to go, she said, uh, oh, I found out how big the room is. And I said, oh, how big? And she said, it's uh, 15 by 18. <laughs> oh, no. And I, I said, what? She found out the size of the hotel room. <laughs> she, she, she thought I was being a diva about it. Oh, the hotel I room. Go. Oh, the hotel oh room. yeah. Wow. I was thinking of doing some carpeting. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Uh, all right. And then we have you and Robin Williams. Which, oh, Robin. Mm-hmm. That, yes. That was, Is uh, that Mork and Mindy? That was uh, the, the uh, first episode of the show I did called Out of the Blue. Oh, Out of the Blue. And yeah. he was on it? And, and he guessed, guessed it on it, yeah, to promote it. So you were he was an alien and you were an angel? Uh, a natural fit. Yeah, <laughs> an easy show to write. And of course, you're raising children because yes. why not? Sure, they were orphans. What's funnier than kids with dead parents? Now, could other people? <laughs> could the kids see you, but not? <laughs> Wait, the two of you, you and Robin Williams, are raising kids? No, Robin just was guested guested okay, on the so first. Okay, so imagine episode. that that okay. you're coming as, in as a friend, and it didn't make any sense. Did you? We're all executives, and okay. you're coming in to yes. pitch out of the blue. Uh huh. Yeah. Go. Okay, okay. Here it is. Yes. Uh, the parents die. <laughs> there we I'm go. Listening. Good start. Yes. Yeah. yes. Need, Green light. They need someone to take care of them. An, an angel appears. <laughs> wait, wait. Why do they need someone to take care of them? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Just, I mean, it was ridiculous. And no. they, they realized that the, the magic was testing well when, you know, I'd make something disappear or appear. Oh, okay. You know. okay. So they gave the angel unlimited power. So there was no jeopardy ever if, you know, I'd be arrested and put in jail and, and I'd Put, yeah. Put, wait, 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 and, wait, why well, is it, why well, is the angel getting arrested and put in jail? Uh, well, that was the setup for the whatever. Oh, yeah, I'm not maybe sure what, he made what the happened, parents but, disappear. Uh, uh, oh, wow! So, wow. Wait, but, but Robin, turn, but, Robin was very sweet and actually very shy off off stage. Was it a here. was it an no, ABC show? It was an ABC. It, okay, show. so that's and he crossed. Yeah, yes. and it came as a friend. Yeah, and he was yeah. on Happy Days. And I was on Happy Days oh. as an angel, of course, which fit in naturally to Happy Days. Perfect. Just yeah. Didn't make any sense. Yeah, in with fact, Chachi the, sells his soul. The op- right. yeah. yeah. The the name of the episode is Chachi sells his soul, <laughs> which explains <laughs> which, so much. Yes. Yeah. Which he did. <laughs> oh. Yeah, truly. <laughs> which he did. Yeah. Yes. Good point. 
So, uh, although I don't know if he got any, but I'll tell you, did he sell it or did he just give it away? I think he just gave it away. I don't, I don't know that he sold it. But I'll tell you how sweet Robin Williams was. Uh, about a year and a half before he passed away, uh, I saw him down at the Comedy Magic Club, and he walked in. And I used to wear, when I was first starting out, I used to wear a sweater on stage, a button-up sweater, because it was cold in New York, uh, going home on the subway back to Brooklyn. So I'd wear a sweater and a jacket, but it was too. Uh, too warm on stage to wear a full-length sweater, so I'd wear a sleeveless sweater that buttoned up the front. And, uh, and I'd end my uh, act every night by saying, uh, I've got to go now because I've got, got to get these clothes back to Mr. Rogers. <laughs> and that was my big laugh. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. First time I went on the road, they lost my sweater, and I thought, oh, I can't perform. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a Crap, they took yes. my best line. So, yeah. so anyway, so Robin, this is the last time I saw Robin, uh, he walked into Comedy Magic Club, and uh, he hugged me and said, oh, Mr. Rogers. Oh, that's so, oh, wow. so good. He'd remember that. Yeah. yeah. A lot of you might not know this, but I actually wrote an old doo wop number from the 60s. Okay. It's called I Like Toast and Jam. I don't know if you, I'll just read some Can of the. Can we hear that, please? Uh, I like toast and jam. I'm a one sandwich man. I like a nice breakfast spread as much as any man can smuckers or marmalade apricot or cantaloupe white bread or sourdough. Am I against condiments? No. Nope. No. Nope. And there's more. It There's goes on. This song. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. really wow. fun yeah, that we're really reading good. song lyrics on a show where we're also talking about Steve Allen. So. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I, and I wrote I that in that. 64. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> yeah, did you? Uh, Boom. I was next door in 65, and you were making a racket. That's right. Uh, yeah. He was two years old. He got panned by uh, Mr. Bro. Right. They didn't have any lyrics. They didn't have any lyrics. They're like, we need, we need some words here. And I just you have that next picture? That's awesome. Okay, we have another picture, okay. and this picture is extraordinary. Oh, my God, this picture. So, so Joe, wow. would you like to- Wow. Would you like to list off who you see there? Oh my gosh! Yes, there's a woman in there. Well, uh, there's Carol Bill Lee Maher, yeah, and uh, Chris Rock, Chris Rock yep. and and there's Gary, Gary, Gary and uh, Jerry, Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld. Who's the woman? Carol Lee. Oh, okay, very good. Jimmy Brogan. There I am. Yeah. Uh, Larry. Larry Miller. Miller. Yeah. And, and Dan. Lay Jeno. Yeah. Okay. There's what a what was picture. It? And of course. Oh, wait a minute. That's a Dantana's. That is Dantana's. Oh, oh that's my great. God. I love oh, Dantana's. Good eye, good eye. Good eye. Yes. So what was happening there, Jim? This was the night after Johnny Carson died. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, two nights, actually, after Johnny. He died on a Sunday. And uh, this was two, the Tuesday after. Uh, Jerry called me and said... Uh, uh, Gary and I wanted to get everyone together to talk about Johnny. Wow. And so we had this unbelievable dinner together. Uh, and uh, at the end of it, uh, uh, Gary says to Jerry, uh, uh, do you want to split the check? And, uh, <laughs> and Jerry goes, yeah. And Gary says, 60-40? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so yeah so i mean gary certainly had the uh, the, the funniest line i mean jerry said when he when he called uh gary on on sunday uh or, or, or gary left a message uh for jerry i guess saying uh i've been crying all day and uh then i heard johnny died <laughs> that's awesome. i mean that's how funny gary was. oh yeah, my was gosh a, but it was you know just one of those great nights and that's and, an amazing and when, picture uh, yeah. gary shandling passed away we got together again uh, wow oh yeah. you did yeah and that was not too long after uh comedians in cars um yes. aired or yeah. whatever that's you right. would call it yeah, yes. which was shocking and they took that great tour of the comedy store they went back there yeah, yeah. Wow. it was very cool yeah that yeah. Was a great episode so yeah. what does a waitress say when she comes over and this is her table <laughs> Well, it's it's actually waiters at. Okay. It, it's an old style Italian restaurant, and I think it's it's a more traditional it's, restaurant. There's a yeah, waiters. women can't yeah. wait. Maitre d's in a, a tux, <laughs> but yeah. older guys and who are used to seeing celebrities, so it didn't okay. it didn't uh, even. But what what happened on the way out is, I guess word got out that that all these guys were there, all these mm -hmm. famous guys. So paparazzi started showing up outside. Mm -hmm. So uh, so we 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 walk out, and I'm holding the door, so everyone get out. So everyone goes out in there getting their cars, and um, uh, Ron uh, Ron Jeremy, the, the, oh, yeah. the porn guy. Oh, my God. The famous porn guy. Yeah. Is, uh, is, 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 <laughs> yeah is, is, is standing there. And he used to, kid porn, they call him. <laughs> and he used to do stand-up in New York, so I knew him. Yeah. yeah. So all the pop rods here, they're taking pictures of all these guys, and uh, I'm standing behind them all talking to Ron Jeremy. Oh, geez. <laughs> oh. I was in a movie with Ron Jeremy. No. But it's not the kind of movie you think. Really? Although it was a it was a scene that had to do with the adult film industry, but of course he's quite famous. Yes. Um, and uh, no, but it was a comedy movie and, and that he was he came in, walked in, and it was just part of the part of the joke was that he was oh. actually in the movie. And what was the movie? It was called Eat Me. 
<laughs> and it's not a porn mod. I, I was. He was hoping to get by without having to tell the title. It really was. Yeah. Okay. Was the bread and butter song in it? <laughs> it was the theme going Ooh. in and out. And actually, Good throughout the entire motion picture. Uh, I want I chicken it. and dumplings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With okay, another my, man. My, you mentioned Gary Shandling. My favorite Gary Shandling joke. I just yes. Found it. Okay. Um, he said, mm. uh, this girl left me. <laughs> Well, what happened is she moved in with another guy, so I dumped her because that's where I draw the line. <laughs> that's yeah. right. That's good. It was great. Uh, I just, I just, I, his, his oh, so man. funny and original. Boy. So, Jimmy, your Wikipedia yes. page uh, yes. also mentions that you've been performing with Jay Leno every Sunday night at the mm-hmm. Comedy and Magic Club in Hermosa Beach. Yes. Uh, and I understand that you that he calls you. Well, you t- you tell it because you you do Jay's voice. <laughs> well, and uh, and he wants to. And I, I guess I experienced this while we were going out, is that uh-huh. he's really unsure every Sunday as to whether or not you'll be joining him. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we've been down every Sunday for... You get a phone call yeah, every yeah, week yeah, for t- on schedule. 28 years, yeah. Uh, and Wow. Yeah, every Sunday, Jay, about 4 o'clock, Jay will call me and say, uh, yeah, you want to drive down together? <laughs> and I go, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, usual time? Yeah, 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 let's do that. Yeah, yeah. So, just confirming. Uh, just yeah, yeah, which is great. It's great. So every Sunday, yeah, and uh, yeah. I'll and tell you a story about driving down with Jay. I imagine uh, he he drives uh, with uh, yes, and, and I drive any to... multiple of. Um, yes. Have you cars, ever been in a yeah. sidecar? Does he have a motorcycle with a sidecar? He does. I, he does. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever gotten in the sidecar? Is no. There, no. No. I've been in the rumble seat of another one of his cars. If you which... know what I'm saying, that's not like a <laughs> euphemism. He draws the wait, line wait, wait. at sidecars. Uh, Jay Leno has never ridden you down to the Hermosa Comedy and Magic Club in a sidecar. He's never done no. that. No, I, but I, I could see I you with the goggles. Oh, the whole, <laughs> Lord. It's, it's, oh well, well, we we have goggles. Close. If you want to click on the next photograph, this oh, yes. was, oh, this is oh. this is taken by a young Jimmy Brogan. That's right. And wow. that's me in in the goggles. You know. Yes. Oh, that is you, Weez. And, we, and Jay took me for a ride up Benedict Canyon, where you got some I butter. I really thought <laughs> <laughs> that we were. Not gonna make it. Uh, oh really? Yeah. Well, yeah. That's not. I a mean, safe that's vehicle. a that's a that's a Stanley steamer. No, yeah. no. Actually, it's, oh. it's a Mercer. Okay, it's, it's a it's, it's a yeah. car. But but it's from <laughs> it's from like 1907, 1913, you, he, 12. He cranked it. Yeah, yeah. And it's like riding. I you explain it, Jimmy. It's well, like Mister Toad's Wild Ride. Yes, complete well, it, with the part where you go to hell. But Benedict Canyon with other cars that are real. Yeah. Well, if you can yes, see, I don't know if you can see this, but in front of Jay, there's a little round circle of glass. Yeah. And. You that's, that? the yeah. that's the windshield. That's the windshield. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's so Louise amazing. is in a, a helmet and goggles, oh, right? Because yeah. she like, doesn't have like one of those. It's a sidecar, yeah. yeah, and a scarf yeah. for the period. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but in back in the day, I see it, no airbags. By the way, there were, no, no, yes. no. Uh, there was no cup holder, and I was uh, outraged. <laughs> Heat seats, <laughs> no. All right, go Child ahead. Child seat, but oh, no. But the Mercer and uh, was uh, a, a popular sports car in the day, and the other sports car was. Um, the uh, the people who drove the other car would say there's nothing worse than a Mercer. Oh, <laughs> they were clever yes. back then. Yes. And, oh, it, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It, it was the Stutz Bearcast, and, and so oh, the Mercer, there you go. The Stutz. Oh, the Stutz. Yeah. And so uh, people that drove Mercers would say to the Stutz people, "You'd have to be nuts to drive a Stutz." Oh my! Wow. <laughs> Just went on and on. But they would always <laughs> the begin every sentence with "say." <laughs> say. Right, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So he picks you up in a car. He, you know he. He has wonderful taste in cars. He loves cars that have oh, yeah. like something special and unique about them. That's right. So what are some of the more interesting cars that you've driven down to Hermosa in? Well, we've been taking actually a Tesla recently, mm. but uh, um, we took in, uh, about a year ago, we took uh, a 1937 Cord. And the Cord was a car uh, company that went out of business in 1937 oh. because of reliability issues. <laughs> <laughs> so Jay says, oh, we'll take this on the 405. Yeah, great. So, yeah. So, we're, so we're, you know, we get on the 405 and right by the airport, we break down. Oh, and, no. And, you know, we pull over the side of the road. We got, so few core deals. Uh, Al Capone. Yeah, I mean, a beautiful. They're beautiful cars. Like, yeah, like a, like a Duesenberg. It's like the baby version of a Duesenberg. Does Does Jay have any cars with ejector seats? Does he have any? Sort of, <laughs> does he have oil slick? Not or, on purpose. Uh, <laughs> has he ever been Has he ever been pulled over? But that's called a coffin nose. 
A coffin nose. That's yeah. coffin nose. Any uh, any car so. name that you can work the theme of death in. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah, great. Which, Have you I driven an Undertaker? Do. Those are really great. <laughs> so what happened? What happened after <laughs> you broke down? They're really low. They ride really low. So so we break down side road and people are stopping now because there's a car broke down and then they see it. It's an old car and then they see it's Jay. You know. Right. So now people are stopping and getting out of their cars to take pictures <laughs> and so uh, traffic is backed up now to Seattle. Just you know, it's just all the the whole West Coast is is, is backed up because two idiots are broken down. Wow. Right? And so the next day, people put pictures up on the internet, and it says, uh, Jay Leno and Prince Charles broken down <laughs> on the side of the road. So you can't trust the internet. That's because what that's I'm a typical yeah. Sunday outing. There you <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, and we had to call the club and have them come pick us up. Oh, really? Oh, geez. And Jay's oh, calling the garage how to fix it. And, oh, it was, wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Jimmy, you are famous for your crowd work. Mm -hmm. uh, nope. Would you say that uh, your catchphrase is, Where are you from? Oh. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I probably say that more than anything else in the act. Yes. Yeah. And do you have do you have answers stored up for wherever someone might be from? Uh, no, actually. Do you surprise yourself? Yeah, I had someone from Switzerland the other night, and it was uh, it was a surprise. You say, yeah. hey, because this is me doing my impression of Jimmy. Okay. I like your cheese. Yeah. Right. right. No? Yeah. <laughs> my my well, crowd. Asked, you can see why you got Carson. My crowd work catchphrase is: <laughs> Would you please be quiet? That was uh <laughs> Mine is like stop screaming at me. <laughs> Mine is wake up. <laughs> <laughs> so because I do I do remember uh seeing sometimes that something, you know, cuz we went out for for a bit of time and I mm -hmm. I saw I heard some recurring lines but not a lot. Like you oh. you know, you're pretty fast mm -hmm. at I mean sometimes you would say like if somebody uh what 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 do you say when someone says that they work for the government? I say, our government? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's new. Oh, oh, yeah, you used to say, oh yeah, I've been writing. I've been writing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and what do you think I say, Luis? You used to say something about, like, well, who has actual work? Or, I don't know, something implying that people that work for the government oh, don't work oh, very hard. Okay. Oh, oh, right. Oh. Pass them over, yeah. yeah. I forgot that, Alf. Yeah. That's oh, 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 this is my favorite Jimmy okay. Brook. This is a recurring joke. And okay. you'll hear why it needs to recur. Um if if someone said if you say what do you do and they say nothing uh -huh. you say well then how do you know when you're finished <laughs> <laughs> am i right classic. about that classic <laughs> that's a classic yes. <laughs> and someone gave me that line really yeah which i'm embarrassed at the most memorable line of my act yeah no no, no no it's Bobby, not it's not Bob the most Kinney gave it to me oh, okay. yeah. there's so many jokes that that recur in my brain when i'm experiencing what's in the joke for example you have a joke about the pizzeria mhm mm would you like to Oh, uh, yeah. that has to be the worst name in the world for a restaurant. Pizzeria? Doesn't sound like a restaurant, does it? It sounds like something you get from eating bad pizza. <laughs> 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 I had dinner at Domino's last night. I've had pizzeria ever since. <laughs> this is the worst case of pizzeria I've ever had. <laughs> and if you, and Payless? Uh, oh, Payless Shoe Store? Uh, have you been to Payless Shoe Store? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I went the other day. I saw the shoes. I realized I'd rather pay more. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need cardboard shoes that badly. Oh, that's right. There's a tag to it. Oh, thank you. Uh, there's, there's a tag. tag. <laughs> yeah. oh, so, so Jimmy, you can work. I mean, you could have worked um, 50 years ago with some, a lot of your material, oh, right? Yeah, exactly. I find that yeah. fascinating, especially in today's, you know, it's where people, it's, it's both an arms race for how shocky you can be, but also... Uh -huh. Uh, uh, this great timidity that we're experiencing right now in the comedy. Oh. But you should kind of cut through that with your where you, where you live with your comedy. I find that fascinating. Well, it turns out it's a better commercial choice mm -hmm. as uh, Leno and Seinfeld found. You know, they can earn huge money playing anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, corporate gigs or churches or what, whatever comes up. And other guys limit themselves. It's true. By being dirty. You know, I mean, some of them have success. But when I was starting out, th there wasn't cable. So... To get well known, you had to appear on the talk shows, and you had to be clean. Yeah. So I mean, that's what we were all aiming for back mm -hmm. in the day. Yeah. So what's your raciest piece of material ever? <laughs> Ooh, the raciest piece yeah. ever Is there Th such that a I've thing? written or that I've done. <laughs> oh wow! Because oh, I, because I may have written something. Yeah. Okay. Racier. So what did you write and, and then think? Oh, I can't. Oh. It doesn't fit my brand. It doesn't fit. Um, I, went, I went out with a woman who was a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. Wow. And. Uh, Oh, she was she was rough. She was she was rough. In bed, I had to wear a cup. <laughs> <laughs> I've never I've never done that joke before. But there, there is a... I, and I'm blushing. I'm embarrassed. Oh, God, but you you have another joke about her too, because she said she oh, said right, you know right, I right. I could break you in half. 
Yeah. Go ahead. Do that one. Well, I could hurt your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I really had. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I love that one. Uh, and you were also the talent coordinator for The Tonight Show. How did that affect your relationships with your fellow comedians? Because I, I really personally experienced that with mm-hmm, you. Mm-hmm. He was now responsible for booking the comics. And I, I did notice the way some people who hadn't been booked on The Tonight Show started to treat him differently. Oh, and how was it different, Louise? They were, they felt, they would even say things out loud or if we would run into somebody like at a grocery store or somewhere else, Mm -hmm. they would make a snide comment to you about how they, you know, sometimes you'd put people up on the board, Uh but you would never actually book them. Oh. And they would make snide comments to you about how so-and-so had been booked three times and they hadn't been booked Uh yet. Uh Uh-huh. And. But that wasn't always my choice. No, but I, mean, I don't. I, I would, I would approve sets. Yeah, you approved sets, but they, they felt like it was, or it they right. would make like a comic on comic sort of sarcasm uh-huh, that felt uh-huh. a little bit. You were the booker for Johnny Carson? No, no, for, for uh, Leno. Leno. Oh, for yeah, Jay, for how long? For five years. Okay. Yeah, the first five years. So you watched a lot show. of tape then? Uh, tremendous. I would get stacks of tape every day in my office, and I thought, oh, I'll just keep them in a bookcase here. Yeah. And <laughs> by the time I left, there was every. <laughs> Wall in my office was was you remember yeah. Louise, loaded was with tape, floor yeah. to ceiling. And your uh, job, tape, your job thousand. was having to watch all of them, or yeah, and go yep. to the clubs and uh, yeah, oh, and wow. work on the sets with the people and and book them on the show. But once I said okay, I like that set, I put up on the board. And generally, when they would book a comic on the show, it's when they'd have a serious guest or political guest. They'd have like Colin Powell or someone you know who's going to yeah. talk serious, and they wanted to. Comedy person then to kind of balance it out, mm-hmm. and so they'd say, "Who's got the most energy?" So those comics tended to oh, go to the top. So it wasn't just people. I like people that just stood there and talked. Right. Yeah, but they always wanted, you know, we want carrot top again. <laughs> you know, yeah. that that kind of act. Right. But I booked uh, Ray Romano. I booked uh, wow. Kevin James. You know, yeah, all those, all those guys. So, so you can look back at now and see, like, oh, that was kind of a turning point in this person's career. Yeah. Can you? Uh. Well, certainly uh, Carrot Top has thanked me. <laughs> or, yeah, because and actually it was it was hard to get Carrot Top on as ubiquitous ubiquitous as he seems because to he be. Because he was so busy, or, or what? <laughs> it just wasn't a style of comedy right. that they did on a prop right. comedy. You know, yeah. Gallagher had maybe had done Johnny a few right. times, but you know, uh, Jay liked Monologist really. So I had to really argue for Carrot Top. Right. And then they started using him a lot once. Uh, How about I've heard that, that term, you? monologist, before? I like that. Monologist? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah. yeah, it's for it's for uh, people who aren't funny but talk a lot. <laughs> Why are you <laughs> looking at me when you say that? <laughs> well, I just, it's like uh, Eric Bogosian and things like that. You know what I mean? Yes. People that would love to be comics. Mm-hmm. Sure, you know, just, and you uh, also worked on Jay's monologues with him. Yes. And this was a 24-7 job. Well, as you remember, we, yeah, 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 that I'd have to leave here to be at Jay's house every night at ten o'clock. Oh, and wow! And he would keep you We'd there until dinner, until what time? Until two in the morning. Right. Yeah. And we, you had all the jokes on cards that were in the running. There were probably a hundred, hundred and fifty jokes that we hadn't done earlier in in the, that day's monologue. So we'd go over through the night, mm-hmm. and plus the writers would all fax stuff to Jay at night. So you know, probably another fifty, a hundred jokes would come in from freelancers, and the writers. Would, would come in. So we'd go over hundreds of jokes and Jeez. get it down to maybe 15 for the next next day. Mm. And then we put it on a tape recorder to get kind of Jay's uh, wording and his, his voice on it. Uh, and then uh, Jay would go in at nine in the morning and start it all over again. And I'd drag in at two in the afternoon because, uh, you know, I got home, at, you know, I left at two. So I needed that uh, yeah. 12 hour turnaround. Jay doesn't sleep. A union man. No. I'm not yeah. convinced he's from Earth. Amazing. No, just, Honestly. Yeah, Jay would sleep three or four hours, go back into work, and when I'd get there, there'd be another stack of a hundred jokes and Jay would and I'd go through them and pick out maybe ten more jokes to put in the monologue for that day. Yeah. And then I would go down and <clears throat> to cue cards and I'd put those in order, you know, put those in the right place with the jokes we had from the night before to get maybe twenty five jokes for the monologue. Yeah. But it was, you know, Jay reading hundreds of jokes. He probably read four hundred jokes a day. Yeah, and he and he yeah. loved it. Yeah, he's just the most enthusiastic person, and he never sleeps. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Superhuman. Yep, yep. Wow, okay. it's the cover of the L.A. Times it was, magazine. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. That's a friendship that goes back way. I mean, his trust, you know, um, that he had in you for all that you did, and that friendship goes back how long? Uh, 
till 79, 79 yeah, yeah. and then when Jay started guest hosting in 86 or 87, yeah. we started doing the monologues. Amazing. So it was five years there and then another nine years at the show. So you guys just clicked that first day on the motorcycle when he saw you. You just had an energy together. Is that right? Uh, well, Jay's a friendly guy. Okay. Yeah. Jay was friends with everybody, you know, and, uh, and, you know, we all went up to Jay's house every night and he would show Plan 9 from Outer Space. Or, <laughs> and, and Jay had... Jay had one of the first uh, VCRs yeah. back in the 70s, with a three-quarter inch, not the oh, half-inch wow. yeah. home version. Yeah. Jay had bought the... Betamax? You know, Did he have a Betamax? No, no, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was a U-matic. industrial size. Yeah. It was you know, half-hour tapes broadcast. Yeah. And he had like a home theater where the whole wall was like the screen. Oh, in Beverly Hills, yeah. 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 But this was his first house up oh, in okay. Nichols Canyon. And, you know, Jay had everyone's appearances on any show, every comic bombing wow. on every show, and he'd pull out, yeah, yeah. Here's Will Schreiner on uh, Mike Douglas, <laughs> or you know whatever, whatever comic. Not not that Will bomb, but I mean just right. whatever comic it was. Yeah, no, yeah. he just he just loves it. Yeah, yeah. All right, are we ready for Facebook feed time? Yes. Oh, now, uh, here's that? a. Uh, well, it's a it's a feature. Oh. If, if I want to have a show, I have to have at least two features. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I've been taught. So Facebook feed time. Last week we addressed the fake uh, Jimmy Brogan scandal yes. that hit the internet. So there it is. Oh, you guys talked about it. Yeah, yeah we, we talked about okay. it last week. Oh, okay. So, and this was the one that was taken down by Facebook uh, because, you know, there's, sh right. there's shame involved. Uh, <laughs> that there was a, a fake Jimmy Brogan that was allowed to uh, create a profile. And it, it could have been the Russians. We don't know. <laughs> right. Well, actually, it, it, where this guy got swept up in was it was a Nigerian Jimmy Brogan who was okay. messaging my friends. Oh. And so I was trying to stop him. Wait, was it the was it the kind of fake Jimmy Brogan who says to your friends, "Hey, I'm trapped in Nigeria and I'm out of money." Oh, you, you know, it, does he look like guy? you? Yeah, <clears throat> he was just using your photo. He right? didn't have he no he didn't have a Facebook profile. He was just on Messenger. Oh, jeez. But I was looking in Facebook for him and came across Swedish Jimmy Swedish Brogan. Swedish Jimmy Brogan. <laughs> yeah. He's like, where are you from? And I, I wondered. And I wondered if it was. Nigerian Jimmy Brogan pretending he was Swedish Jimmy Brogan. <laughs> so I, I wasn't sure. So I complained uh, a number of times to Facebook about him, and they wouldn't take the profile down. Yeah. So I then posted it on uh, on Facebook asking my friends what they do, and everyone started reporting the Swedish Jimmy Brogan until Facebook took down the post, took his his uh, down. And, and unfortunately, and here, here's your explanation and oh, your okay. update as to what had happened. Hey, gang, I just got a message from Facebook that they took down the page of the fake Jimmy Brogan, uh -huh. uh, Swedish Jimmy Brogan, right. as well as my post about it. And then and then they also, uh, everybody weighed in. Yeah. Um, who and books the comedy who's? <laughs> comedy uh, who's? See, I have a, at the at end the of the mine. Comedy a, who's? At the comedy who's. It, <laughs> and then we it found took me out. hours finding the right name for the comedy club. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> the so comedy who's. Then we found <laughs> out. Do you need an umlaut over the U and who's? But we found out. Not Jimmy, that I can find Malvo. I mean, we found out that making the, the umlaut uh, on on <laughs> yes. my you just hold down the u oh do you and then it'll give you a bunch oh, of oh yeah. ah, Matt. No way. good one thank god i was here wait yes. is, that, is that correct no yes. I, see i have to confer to the even younger people no no that oh yeah no. oh. that must be for mac yeah uh, oh oh no, no. are you a PC for windows guy? windows if you do that it oh, shuts okay. down the I've computer i've got to put in numbers yeah. i've got to put in a, Keep a that, code Oh. I've got to hold reveal down reveal codes. Code keep and, keep yeah, the yeah, fact yeah. that you got windows yeah, on yeah. your hat. Don't let anyone know. <laughs> <laughs> just cover the we tell anyone. We'll fix that in post. So, Jimmy. Right, guys. <laughs> no one will ever know that Jimmy I has love windows. windows. Jimmy, report about <laughs> and, Android. I'm an Android phone guy. Yeah. <laughs> what we ultimately found out there. about yes? fake Swedish Jimmy oh. Brogan is that he's a truck driver whose name happens to be Jimmy Brogan who oh. thought it would be fun if he used your photograph as his profile picture. Sure, for him it was. And, well, but that was his step too far. Like, you can't have the same name as someone famous and then use his photograph as your profile mm -hmm. picture. And also collect yes. all your residuals. That was yeah, way That was way, that, was the way, yeah, that was crossed the line. <laughs> and I'm huge in Sweden, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so tell but, us but, what you we saw. Like his house. That's not <laughs> But my understanding is his, his father changed the name oh. from a Swedish name. Oh, no kidding. He just picked a name out that he thought would stand out in Sweden of Jimmy Brogan. Right. And so the kid became Jimmy Brogan, I think, too. So I think it's a it's, wow. a, it's a kid, and for some reason, he just chose my picture as a joke. Oh, he's a kid. I, th I think. Oh, so it's I'm not another sure. kid that you've taken down. Is what you're yes, it may. So I feel terrible now. About well, can we get it, it reinstalled? Can we write to Facebook and say, hey, this was a mistake. He was just messing around. 
Or should we, Trish, how do we get this Jimmy Brogan You're opening certified? Up a can of Swedish oh. meatballs. Yeah. There. We can get you yeah. certified. Right. And then nobody will be, yeah. then yeah. they'll know if it's the real Jimmy My Brogan. My parents have a history of that. Switching names around willy nilly. <laughs> oh, uh, what's your name? Jack Wallpapers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's a weird name, but all right. Yeah. But I assume he could probably go on eventually and with his own name, because there's a lot of Jimmy Brogans on. Uh, face sure. Oh, there or, are. Jim, or Jim Brogan or James Brogan. Yeah. There's a lot of. Oh, yeah. that's a common name. Uh, yes, I've got cousins, and I mean, as well as people I don't even know if they're related or not. But uh, so it's it's fairly common, and he probably could, and just put his own picture up. <laughs> right. I don't know why exactly. he ch- yeah. happened to choose me, but yeah. I think he just. He thought it was funny. Yeah, it wasn't funny. He was, it was funny to his friends. Yeah, I think yeah. he was excited to find out he had the same name as a famous. Hollywood comedian. There you go, exactly. Who know. looks like Prince Charles. <laughs> you look at Justin like the real <laughs> I wonder how many Louise Palenkers there are on Facebook. Oh, right? I mean, oh, that's a good question. There's about 14 or 15 match champagne. Oh, I figure. Really? A lot yeah. of them in Louisiana. Really? Yeah, it's a cage, you know, French, makes the French. Sense. Yeah. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Did you I, trace I, your I told my mom that I wasn't the only match champagne, and she, she got very sad. She was like, you know, that can't they, be true. Did, did they change the name at some point, or was that... Does it come like Sh- from the Champagne region of France? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, oh. yeah. I should really. You really should it. look into I that. Really, <laughs> yeah. I should really. By the way, I've been saying that my whole life. I should yeah, really <laughs> do some research, some fundamental research yes. into Champagne. We now have an internet. It's, you uh, can do that. Say that. Yeah. It, it's French. It's French Canada. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But uh, there are a lot of champagnes in Louisiana. Anyway. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, What's your middle name? Louis. Okay. Well, that should differentiate you. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. There, uh, there's a uh, professional Canadian go-kart racer named Matt Champagne. Oh, wow. Specifically go. go-karts. He, professional he, he, Canadian he just, go-kart. Those <laughs> are three very specific yes. qualifiers. That's right. right. He will not go near an engine. He needs a, he needs a, <laughs> an engine-free vehicle and preferably a downhill. A hill. Uh, sort of yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> but that is why <laughs> your Twitter handle is something that you say at the end of every set. Yeah, I say I remain Champagne or I, I remain Matt Champagne. Oh, okay. I remain mad. Everything's better when it rhymes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions for our special guest, Jimmy Brogan? I have a question for Matt. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Okay, here we go. Does every review of you say uh, bubbly? <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> you know what? This is gonna sound. I don't read. I don't read review. Well, first of all, I've been reviewed maybe twice. Okay. But uh, I don't. I don't read reviews. It's gonna be I'm, a third one. It's not gonna be good. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Jimmy's working on it right <laughs> now. Yeah. That's right. Uh, I'm working on. No, I'm not I, bubbly at all. I don't. I don't get called bubbly. He was flat. Yes, I'm, I'm just gonna say. I need I'm faster. Oh, oh, flat. That's good. I get it was like flat. getting a cork in the eye. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys got. You guys. Yes, you we're guys got it. We got this. There's there's three things: bubbly, flat, and cork. Wait, but Matt, we want to hear. He so Matt has a brief but memorable appearance in the new movie Vice and he plays oh, yes. I played Doug Fife Doug the Fife Under Secretary for Defense for the Pentagon you guys you guys didn't see the Doug Fife appearance <laughs> ah. living yeah. person Doug yeah. Fife was invited over to the couch in and Johnny's you day captured him <laughs> what was his role in the Bush 2 administration oh, he was just a Bush toady okay. uh, that uh, tried to legitimize our reasons for going into uh, Iraq you know, uh. trying to trying to tie 9-11 do you saying. get mm-hmm. shot in the face? I no, no, no. I'm not. The, I'm not that guy. You're not that guy. Okay. <laughs> that, that, so you went. Guy, to, that guy is in it, and it's very funny. So you went to the premiere. <laughs> you went to the premiere. I did. I yeah. went to the premiere. I went to my first Hollywood. Premiere. Wow. Tell, oh, cool. Tell us more. Uh, Adam McKay, the director, was on stage, and before the film, he introduced the uh, actors that showed up. And I was the second one introduced, and no one knew who who I was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, yeah. Then, and then each actor got more and more popular, and got more and more applause. And uh, you know, eventually Christian Bale came out, and the place they almost had to call the fire department. It was uh, it was crazy. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then they showed the movie, and it was, uh, it was it was fun. And I'm in there for maybe 15 seconds or so, but mm-hmm. I talk. I have lines. What's, of your, what's your line? Yeah. What, what should we look for? Oh, I, oh uh, well, I'm doing a scene with the guy playing Paul Wolfowitz. He was one of the Hawks. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, we did a bunch of scenes, and uh, it's written where I just say, "I got something," and then I say something about spies and 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 uh, chat and uh, what's up? <clears throat> what's a Prague? In Prague. Yeah. By take eleven, I started going, Wolfie. I got something. <laughs> well, I thought for sure Matt he's was going to shut me up. down. He yeah. doesn't want me to say Wolfie, and yeah. he was yeah, like, yeah. he was like. <clears throat> I like Wolfie. Keep doing that. Yeah. And I was like, all right. And it's oh. 
It's in the movie. It's in there. <laughs> oh, Wolfie wow. made it. And Wolfie made it. That's, That's good. My improv line, Wolfie. Made yeah. It, made it I mean, I think and my was. face going, Wolfie, I got something. All right. So when you see someone in the movie say Wolfie, just remember, it's it's remain champagne. It's, it's towards yes. it's towards the end. It's about it's it's about an hour and he knows the minutes and seconds. He's not going to say it, but yeah. uh, <laughs> right. It's a bold Did you, film. How te- when you when you yeah. have a cameo in a big Hollywood movie, like how tempted are you to sit there with your phone on your lap and then? <laughs> Yeah, you know, just fire off like. Uh, I a friend of mine tried to take a picture of the closing credits, but uh, you can't see anything because it's all crazy. Yeah. But uh, no, I'm I'm pretty good about turning my phone off. I was once given a talking to during a Star Wars, the you? last Star Wars. Uh oh. I wasn't enjoying. It wasn't enjoying the movie. Yeah. So I turned my phone on, but I turned it down. I turned it. I thought it was. The, this guy was just like. That's like sort of smoking. This guy, this, I know. <laughs> I should have walked out. I should have walked out. I, I wasn't enjoying the movie. I should have left. All right. Well, at least you're anyway. willing to learn and grow. Yeah, that's which right. is that's true. Mm-hmm. That's All right. Are you ready for our second feature, Jimmy Brogan? Oh, Jim. Here oh. we go. What's Twitter okay. trending? Oh. Now, uh, before we go to what's Twitter trending, today we lost Penny Marshall. Oh, and Jesus. I just was wondering if anybody had any, any thoughts or memories of having encountered you her. You never worked with Penny? I met her a few times when I was doing the show out of the blue that we talked about earlier. Uh-huh. Uh, it was on the Paramount lot. Right. And mm-hmm. she, she was down a couple stages uh, next to Happy Days mm-hmm. with her show. And um, the, uh, when I was first starting out, uh, there was a comic, Phil Foster, who saw me at a, at a small club and said, uh, you really need help. <laughs> you know, that's how bad I was. And he's, he started having free classes for us uh, every Tuesday in New York. Uh, just giving advice uh, on comedy and telling us what mm. to do it was wonderful. And one day he didn't show up, and uh, so uh, my friend Leah called his house and said his son said, "Oh, he went to California to do a TV show." Wow! And it was Laverne and Shirley. How about uh, that? He was the father. He was. Yeah. Uh, oh, he was, of course, he that's was right. right. Yes. So, and it revived his career. Yeah. And it, it turned out that uh, I mean, not only had given to us, but he had hired Gary Marshall in the fifties. It was one of Gary Marshall's first writing jobs. And Gary Marshall of course, wow. produced Happy Days and, yes. and thought of him and brought him out. How about without that? a pilot even thing? They just Amazing. loved yeah. him. Uh, yeah. yeah, and so they he was on. Him. And then when I was doing Out of the Blue, I was able to pay him back by giving him a joke for Laverne and Shirley. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I went down to, to watch a rehearsal one time, and he he walks out. He's he's supposed to go to a parade, a uh, military parade, a Veterans Day parade maybe. And so he comes out in his uniform, and it and he goes, oh, see, it still fits, you know. And, and, and there was no joke there. It was just, you know, he was proud of it. And I said, it'd be so much funnier if you were just bulging out of it and you were the only one that thought that, <laughs> that it's that still fit. Still fit. Yeah. So, and, and, but I'd seen the dress rehearsal. And then when the show taped, he comes out and he's just bulging. He had, he had wardrobe taken in, you know, so yeah. he's just bulging out of the uniform. He wants to say, he still fits. And of course, everyone Everybody just fell. cracks up yeah. on the, <laughs> on the set it. there. Yeah. That's good. I remember, laugh. So Rob, I was able to thank him. Robin Williams telling a Penny Marshall story because he did Awakenings mm-hmm. with Robert right. De Niro. Oh, that's right. She directed that, right? And he yeah. told this story of some scene he was doing with Robert De Niro, and he, he, uh, Robert De Niro moved because he was playing a guy with that that condition, and he moved his head too fast, and Ro- Robin Williams accidentally head butted <laughs> Robert De Niro in the nose. Oh, jeez! A, a nosebleed, and Penny Marshall came over and went. Uh oh! <laughs> Someone's overacting. <laughs> <laughs> a good one. Beautiful. Uh, I love it. Did you know that she was the first woman to direct a movie that made more than a hundred million dollars? Oh, is that right? Wow. What do you, big. What do you think? Big. Big. Correct. Yeah. Oh. That's a fun fact. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What yeah. A wonderful movie that is. Tom, Tom Hanks's impression of Penny Marshall is: This is Penny uh, while she's water skiing. Oh, I'm being <laughs> dragged behind a ball. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if she ever water skied, but that was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was what he imagined. <laughs> she was wonderful. Yes. I have stories of people telling stories about that. <laughs> and I that's, love that's that. Really, that's good. That's really great. Yeah. I, well, I have a story about someone that played her father. Yeah, so. Yeah. No, that's yeah, really yeah. good. I have a story about interviewing John Lovitz while he lived at her house. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. What? And Yeah. So she wasn't home, but... Uh, <laughs> So, so but, he, was, he was house sitting? Yeah, he, he just we, lived there. I think what we're trying to say is we don't know anything about Penny Marshall okay. personally. You can fact check this, but I, 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 I remember, remember this, Weez. Yeah, I do remember being told later that like, oh yeah, people crash at her house all the time. That's just how she was. Like, you need a place oh. to live. You you can live here. She was like the the you know just that was how she was. She oh. took care of everybody. That's beautiful. That's sweet. Hmm. 
Uh, so what's Twitter trending? Let's we see. We have hashtag 2018 White House movies. And the winners are, this is from Snark Side of the Moon. Who wants to read first? Oh, I get it. Yeah, you I go see. ahead, Matt. Mueller knows what you did last summer. But it's pronounced Mueller. <laughs> Mueller. Yes, oh, really? Mueller. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Mueller knows what you did last summer. Uh, gross <laughs> misconduct tweets. You've got jail. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll give you one, the last one, Jim. Uh, Steve Redman tweets. There you go. The Lion King. <laughs> ah, ah, there we go. Nice. Those are going to be some good flicks. Mm-hmm. Look forward to. <laughs> All right. Now, Jimmy, we... Yeah. Uh, we, you have something to plug, and yes. we should have a link to this. He's going to be at Flappers. Do you guys have that link? Flappers. Cool. Flappers. Flappers. Flappers Comedy Club? Yeah. yeah. On the, uh, In, when are you doing that, Jimmy? 28th and 29th. 28th, I think? Yeah, the weekend of the 28th, 29th. And you're going to be with Dana? I'm with Dana Eagle. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So that show will be unbelievable because they're both so good. <laughs> That's fun. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. She's a very good comic. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, she's yeah. so good. And uh, so every and, well, and Mary Gallagher as well. Oh, Mary Gallagher. Okay. Yes, so where can people uh, go to get her first uh, TV appearance yeah. on, on Colbert? Oh, she did. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, a couple months ago. So yeah, cool. So, so where can show? people go to and find maybe tickets. a special guest? Uh huh. Not saying who. Ah. Uh-huh. Match champagne. No. <laughs> oh, Luis <laughs> Palenque. My email. I'm a drop in. <laughs> I'm a dropout guest. A parachute. So Jay where? Leno. So where can people go to? Oh yeah, oh, yeah it could be Jay Leno be? or Prince could Charles. Be. Uh, or Prince Charles, yeah. Where can yeah. people go to get tickets? Just Flappers? Uh, yeah, on the Flappers website. Flappers website. Yep. Cool. All right, I want to thank everyone for being with us. Uh, this is going to be our last show before the holidays. We will be dark for Christmas Day and New Year's Day. I want to thank Devin. Devin, what's your last name? Devin Fay. I ask you that every time you're here, right? When do you think I'll and learn he, it? It's funny. He changes it every time, <laughs> Any too. predictions? No. It's different every yeah, time. Devin, Devin wallpaper. <laughs> Devin, are you, Devin are you uh, related to <laughs> Tina? Tina? Tina Fay? She's your aunt. All right. She's Ronda your Cross. aunt. Really? Wow. Is that true? No. Oh, See? Good one. You got it. You got it. You got Lane McFadden, David Court, Matt Champagne, Jack Daniel, uh, Joseph Piano, Patricia Bach, Dina Friedman. Uh, I am Louise Planker. And thank you to our in-studio guest, Jimmy Brogan. Thank you. Yeah, Jimmy. Jimmy Brogan.com. Thank you.